started this concept, which got the imagination of the general public, the, the fans, and the racers alike. During the summers of 1988 and 1989, a class of cars materialized onto the drag racing scene, categorizing themselves as top sportsmen slash pro modified. These cars were often beautifully exaggerated replicas of modern and nostalgic factory models, packing loads of horsepower from either supercharged power plants on alcohol or Texas-sized big blocks breathing big gulps of nitrous oxide. We call this program the Mod Squad. I'm John Gill. Along with Diana Thomas, let's hear one of Pro Mod's pioneers, Rob Vandergriff, describe his ride that wreaked havoc on the class from the get-go. The Soft Cell 57 is a Jerry Haas built 108 inch chrome Molly tube chassis car, which is going to best a 7 flat at 205.95. Features a 615 cubic inch Eagle Racing Engines motor with an NOS Fogger 1 and 2 system. Uh, the NOS system has two bottles, has a Pro Flow fuel system completely on the car. Uh, the NOS system has a, a 300 horsepower system in the st first stage and a 250 horsepower system in the second stage. Like I say, it's best ET, the seven flat, and the best mile an hour is 205.95. As unique as Van de Grift's car was, it was also somewhat typical of what serious pro modders were bringing to the table. Strong Molly tube chassis housing enough horsepower to shake up the grandstands and run the low sevens and high sixes needed to be competitive. 1989 marked the arrival of the United States Super Circuit to Old Bridge Township Raceway Park, bringing such talent as Bill Coleman with his wife and son running the Summit Racing Beretta. This Winfield, Missouri posse was known for juggling ET and mile per hour records with steadfast consistency. The Coleman Camp, a class act for sure. Towing from North Carolina and utilizing the alcohol supercharger setup, the late Walter Henry's crew ran this beautiful 89 vet with the super circuit. Walter Henry, a true pioneer of pro mod racing, seen here with his son, Denver Fever Racing. Maryland's own Randy Milano poised in the stage lanes. When you're talking super circuit, you're talking Animal Jim and that outrageous mammoth Mercury Zephyr. Big, red, and fast, Animal always a crowd pleaser and serious performer. And the, uh, I believe the mammoth Mercury was named Zeke. Okay, that's, that's the name of that. A logger by trade, Terry Leggett's 1956 T-Bird was a prime example of nostalgia. Beautiful nostalgia, a beautiful piece of work, the looking back T-Bird. Richard Earle's 57 Plymouth Fury, aptly titled Christine. Gordy Frost in the stage lanes. The year is 1989, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Super Circuit, the USSC. When race car booking agent extraordinaire Dwayne Nichols assembled these pro mod cars into a touring road show, i.e. the United States Super Circuit, the press picked up on it immediately, and soon drag racing publications were doing multi-page spreads on the new daring breed of race machinery. Top sportsmen, pro mods, door slammers on a mission. On a mission indeed, Diana Thomas. A mission to pull into race tracks across the country and provide thrills matched with the muscle of over-the-top performances. You know, many compared the formidable years of the pro mods to that of the formidable years of the funny cars. Both were often rambunctious and slightly out of control, keeping fans at the edge of their seats as they watched these door slammers write their own ticket by pushing the envelope with a much more lenient rule book to follow than that of the traditional pro stockers. Playing big on the outlaw image, and most often the proverbial run what you brung and hope you brung enough, matched with some of the most creative bodywork fans have seen in a long time. Pro Modified made its mark and started to draw spectators to the strip with curious fury to check out what all the noise was about. And they weren't let down by no means. 
the fact that these door slammers could tow in with a supercharger and a blower or a mountain motor nitrous plant and run in the sixes like Bill Coleman here as he passes a 687 on us, this had the fans sold. This is the wild world of Pro Modified. Watching the Mod Squad here on the Drag Racing Underground. I'm Animal Jim Foyer, the owner of this Mammoth Mercury, the world's fastest Mercury and fastest Ford. The uh, body is a 79 Mercury Zephyr. The chassis was originally built by Woody Mays of Chassis Craft in 1979, which makes it a 10-year-old car. Uh, this is a Ford Boss 429 designed Hemi. It's uh, bored and stroke to 675 cubic inches. The uh, block and heads and intake are all aftermarket pieces manufactured by the Ford SVO. The uh, got Holly Dominators that are 1150 a piece. The uh, fuel is assisted by a nitrous oxide system. You can see the uh, injectors right here. That is an NOS fogger system. And we also have a dry sump oiling system to keep the engine well lubricated. This engine is uh, capable of uh, 1,600 horsepower with the nitrous oxide assist. Without the nitrous, it's basically about 1,250 horsepower. This is the working department of uh, my 200 mile an hour ride. Starting down here, this is the uh, MSD brain box, which is the finest ignition that money can buy. Here is the Lenco transmission, which is a planetary type transmission by pulling these levers back one at a time, locks it into gear, and it is a four-speed transmission. And this little lever down here is the reverser. This lever here is a handbrake to help with staging. Up here, we have an escape hatch which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I was the innovator, the first door slammer to ever have an escape hatch. Here's the parachute release. Uh, over here, we've got a lot of buttons and switches. I think at last count, in order to make one pass, I had 11 buttons and switches to operate on this ride, and uh, four pedals and five levers. <laughs> Keeps you pretty busy. Do I look like Brett Kepner now? Yeah, you look good. Do I? <laughs> Down here, we've got the uh, Goodyear tires that we use for the 200 mile an hour charges. They're 33 inches by 16 wide and 15 inch diameter, along with center line rims that are also 14 inches wide and 15 inch diameter. This is a genuine 22 inch Rick Jones wing that uh, Rick owner of Rick Jones race cars modified for my car last winter and it works real real fine it's got several adjustments here for track conditions so the uh, more traction you need the higher you bring the wing up back here we have another Rick Jones feature is a little trap door with the same type of fasteners as my safety hatch and under there is our nitrous oxide bottle where we can reach in and turn the handle on or off, plus the gauges in there where we can visually see the uh, pressure, keep a handle on it. Back here, we've got twin Pyrotech 12-foot parachutes. The speeds that these door slammers are going today, and some of the tracks are marginal on shutdown. The two chutes are almost a necessity to get these cars stopped. And they do a fine job. Animal Jim always doing a fine job of wooing the crowd with that 78 Zephyr. 
That profile was recorded in 89. Animal was and is a constant threat on the Promot circuit. That's right, John. Violent launches and real quick times from the Trans Am of Long Island's Mike Ashley. Bill Coleman. And there's certainly no mistaking that hard, charging, no holes barred Summit Beretta. The late Gordy Neal piloting Scott Shafroff's not quite over the hill gang Trans Am, the first door slammer to break the six second barrier. Gordy Neal was a great driver. Lilborn George's Norm Wisner. And the fans sure do appreciate that 1957 Mega Ford Ford Fairlane. Jeff Weddles. Looks like parts crunching. Ohio's Don Lee. Terry Leggett, Pinetown, North Carolina's fast little bird. Walter Henry in the Denver Fever car. You know, 1989 also marked the fall classic at Atco Raceway, and the first time the Pro Mods officially hit the pavement there. 1989. IHRA ran the class as a national event category, and NHRA granted exhibition rights to the ProMod teams. It was a frenzy. It's the wildfire entry. Randy Delano. and barless big olds coming at you animal jim just getting the bugs out of the mammoth mercury in his final pass before his fatal crash romod pioneer walter henry runs a strong 7-11 continue here on the drag racing underground moving on to footage from 90 and 91 the pro mods continue to escalate in popularity as well as continuous controversy carbureted teams claiming the supercharged teams had an unfair advantage strife over rules and regulations always bubbling under Pro Mod developed quickly and feverishly, and everyone wanted an equal and balanced playing field. The famed and often feared Adi's Automotive Black Mariah. This was definitely a class that marched to the beat of a different drummer and established itself as a form of escapism in the drag arena, while its following continued to grow. Animal Jim gets a new, more aerodynamic Ford Probe, but he also holds on to his big boxy Zephyr. Animal was the 1990 Super Circuit champ. Legend Ronnie Sox's Trick 64 Mercury Comet. And we see a doorless Christine parked in the pit area. And this is Christine's wild driving compartment with the Lenko shifters. Randy Moore's Toasty Asti Spumanti Lamborghini, proving in Pro Mod that almost anything goes. 
and often goes pretty darn fast. E-Town, 1990. Rob Vandergriff is now a teacher at Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School. And there's certainly no questioning his credentials. Sox's Comet. Running awfully hard on the Ford Power. Ronnie Sox was one of the funny car innovators from the 1960s and a monster of a threat in the early pro stock wars, campaigning the famed Sox and Martin entries. That's right, Pearson and Ragusa. And we have a carburetor fire on the starting line as everyone rushes to help extinguish it. Mike Ashley with a new Jerry Haas Beretta GT. The kid from Long Island. Coleman's 200 mile per hour summit billboard. This team was the quickest at the moment. Low six eighths from Lawson and Stroop. Scotty Cannon and the onset 41 Willies. Going in from Lyman, South Carolina. Some have gone as far as to call him the John Force of Pro Mod. He does tend to similarly psych out a lot of the competition. Animal with the probe. The pride and joy of Illinois. Bob Bailey's Monte Carlo. Mark Christopher's 65 Impala full scale attack, working it out. Jeff Weddle's smoking him up. Camaro with the blower. Lasordo's Nitrous Avenger. Al Billis, 86 Camaro. Al Billis comes to RP from Canada and does manage to get it into the sixes. The first woman to go 200 miles per hour in a door slammer. Don Campanello. The Black Mariah. Fred Hahn piloting the Audi's bet. Jeff Reynolds gets a little squirrely off the launch pad and does the smart thing. He lifts and gets out of it. 1991. We see here a member of Scott Jazak's Hot Rods from Hell circuit. Ron Zavarella's beautiful candy gold Road Warrior 32 Ford Coupe, powered by a 427 blown Chevy. 
Ron comes from Manchester, Connecticut, and has run in the mid-sevens. Although not a pro mod, certainly a sight for sore eyes. And it looks like Ron is getting a little wily there. Another non-pro mod, but a neat car just the same. The Parker Henry Johnson Marine and Norcross Excavator Entry. Dropping down low with 670s and high 660s. Randy Moore's old powered Lamborghini. Moore also runs 670s and high 660s. The Lamborghini body style worked quite well. The 67 Camaro of Dave and Mike Persico. They're from Orchard Park, New York. It's killer time. Ohio's own Killer Brooks. Ronnie Socks. James Fogler. Powell, New Jersey's Carolyn Melody. Ed Burnley and Delano's Firebird. Manny De Jesus, the witch doctor Nova. Bob Bailey. Don Lee with a new ride. Let's look at some Novas with blowers. Madison Garage Low Rider Olds. Socks. And the Jukebox Ford. And we have a 
couple of wild bunchers for you. The ever courageous Tommy Howes, along with Camp Stanley. These guys have toured just about everywhere with these ultimate super comp type cars, including trips to Australia, where they ran with the Aussie Wild Bunchers. And the folks at the uh, in the Raceway Park grandstands sure got a kick out of him. Very entertaining, along with very good performance. Close out 91 with footage of Ronnie Sox doing a station ID for rocking and racing radio personality Wild Girl. Alright, this is Ronnie Sox. But I'm not driving this 1964 or modified 200 mile an hour comet. I listen to Wild Girl WFMU 91.1 FM East Orange, New Jersey. Raceway Park track photographer John McCartney hamming it up for the camera there. It's 1992. Charles Carpenter under the RP Tower as we continue with the Mod Squad here on the Drag Racing Underground. Carpenter's beautiful Chevy with the uh, shoveled nose. A rear view of Animal Jim's new Jerry Haas built Wonderbird, Ford Thunderbird with the Doug Fennel paint. In the pits, Wayne Torkelson's 1955 T-Bird being prepped as we see some of that powder blue chassis work on the front end. Wayne Torkelson and son tow in from California with the lone entry. The Persico Camaro, piloted by Gary Grainer, getting a push. The Audis camp also giving a push to their Corvette. The Pro Mods continue, as does the blower controversy. As the unsupercharged teams continue to yell, ban the blower, the life goes on as the popularity of the class steadily increases. Manny DeJesus' Witch Doctor, a severely chopped and channeled version of Chevrolet's 1968 Nova. We see yet another Audi's vet. The colors seem interchangeable at this point, but no matter what the color, they all strike fear in the competition. The Bill Mitchell-backed Camaro. And the first lady of Pro Mod, New Jersey's Carolyn Melendy toes by. Jeff Weddle's Camaro, let's see a profile of Long Island top sportsman pro mod racer Chuck Ragusa. Okay, my name is Chuck Ragusa. I'm here at Englishtown today running a quick eight. Um, my car is a 55 Chevy, it's all glass. It's a 632 inch cubic uh, Chevrolet engine with a power glide. Uh, we just made a pass, we ran 787. Okay, the, the car has a shovel nose for our aerodynamic. Um, the car is made out of fiberglass. It's got a three-inch chop roof. Um, it's complete glass from front to back. Chrome molly chassis. It's got four-wheel disc brakes. Um, it has a dynamic uh, power glide in it with a dynamic converter. It has also two dominators, uh, 1400 CFM dominators by Chuck Newton. Has a sheet metal intake. It has, it's a she all Chevrolet engine, Chevrolet cylinder head, Chevrolet block. Um, the, the paint was done by Manny's Rod and Custom paint, paint in uh, Smithtown, New York. It is all neons and pearl, purple pearls and white pearls. Uh, 
Well, how long have you had it? Had the car approximately two years. It was hand built. Uh, Zeker did the chassis. Uh, Pro Start mounted the body in chassis. Um, my friend Bob Perry built the motor, who also runs Pro Stock. Yep, I'd like to thank my wife and my daughter Jessica and my whole family, my friends Artie, my brother Joe, my other friend Steve, my friend Kenny. Without them, I couldn't be able to run this car this fast. Chuck Ragusa, a heavyweight on the Northeastern Pro Shootout circuit. Love that old Chevy. Ragusa's ride isn't as chopped as some of the other old Chevys in the class. No, it's beautifully unique. Adio Placino with the burnout. Adio is a regular at Raceway Park. You see him here quite often testing and tuning. John Noble, he has a strong reputation amongst the outlaw pro stock crowd. He sure does. When he pulls up to the line, it means business. of socks for you. Carolyn Melendy revving it up to a dry hop. A lady with a big heart and a heavy foot. of a 1970 Chevelle running in the six is a whole lot of nitrous. Folgor out of Colts Neck, New Jersey. Another fellow real popular with the outlaw pro stock folks. Yeah, 
it's the animal. Consistently running the quickest passes of any of the nitrous Fords, six eighths abundant. Manny de Jesus. No skimping on the rubber. Lights them up pretty hard. This Nova's a bit rambunctious, a very aggressive ride. continues the Ford fight with this classy 57 jukebox Ford. Torkelson's 55 Bird. Got the taillights on in the twilight. Downtown Freddie Brown. Freddie's an automatic trans whiz hailing from Long Island, New York. Bill Mitchell Camaro. The Persico Camaro. Ronnie Rose. And pop goes the scoop up into the atmosphere. Flies off the Nova. That was pretty dramatic. Raceway Park manager Jimmy Knapp picks it up, lands in the other lane, and it appears Mr. Rose is a good sport about it. Jeff Weddles.
getting his net in order. of a clean and proper top sportsman car. Romero Rivera in the Bad Bird Racing Thunderbird kind of radical even with the pro mod circles and if you're considered radical among those peers that says something john torres getting a little wide on the burnout. Another pretty vintage Chevrolet, and I believe he runs a Freddie Brown transmission. Pretty good on the E Town surface. Chuck Ragusa. Transmission converter explodes and the trans fluid starts a fire. The hell on fire system takes care of the situation well. Chuck's okay and everything's under control now. We'll see more of this Chevy all mended up and running hard a little later. Sure will. This team has resilience. And coming up, we have a profile of Paul Rocco's world's fastest and quickest Volvo, soup to nuts, here on the Drag Racing Underground. My name is Paul Rocco, um, service director for Volvoville USA. I built this 91 uh, Volvo 780 Bertone. The uh, chassis was built by IRS race cars. It's a full tube chassis with a four link suspension. Uh, we're using a Volvo Penta boat motor, which is a nine to one compression motor. Uh, we also use a Lenko uh, four speed transmission. The, uh, we expect the car to go to run about uh, mid sevens on, on nitrous oxide. Uh, we're completing our license test right now and uh, hopefully by the end of the day uh, we'll have that completed and uh, then we'll continue, uh, begin to campaign the car. Uh, the, uh, the crew on the car are basically my sons and Tom Sinnott, Paul uh, Rocco Jr. and uh, Jimmy Rocco. Uh, we've been doing this for many years now. I've been doing it for 30 years and my, my sons have been doing it since they were children, little children. And uh, we intend to uh, do well with this car next year. Next year, we'll put a 638-inch motor in it, built by GNR Performance and Wayne Sharkey. And uh, we hope to compete in a pro-modified class. Okay, Paul Rocco, license testing at Old Bridge Township Raceway Park. And yeah, certainly a good place to do so. 
car is all steel and weighs in at about 2,600 pounds. It sure is something to see a Volvo in uh, this race trim. Here we have a shot of the car a little later in the season. Some new paint applied and it is closing in on the mid seven second zone to earn the distinction of the quickest and fastest Volvo. 1993 footage here. Frankie's toy driven by Ronnie Siders. And we have a correction on the 92 segment. Norm Wisner's jukebox Ford was a 1955 model, not a 57. That's right, Diana. Sideways Siders gets it down the track. Charles Carpenter with Custom Auto Sound aboard as a sponsor. And sporting a new paint scheme to suit the sponsorship. It sure is good to see when these uh, Promont cars get sponsored. Wayne Torkelson. Tommy Howes of Wild Bunch fame running this blown Camaro. Animals Wonderbird. The animal with a reputation for smoky burnouts. A true showman when booked into an event. A real crowd pleaser. The Jasmine Racing Camaro. Ed Guarnaccia from Feasterville, PA. Ed running a LeBaron. Another carpenter pass. An unidentified Monte Carlo. Experiencing some awful tire shake there. Bob Perry. Bob comes from Center Reach, New York. Buster Rayner. Supercharged Thunderbird. Mike Ragusa. And a supercharged Firebird. Hotties. Another pass from Tommy Howe. Torkelson gets down the E-Town quarter mile like a wild, hairy canary. And we're in Long Island, New York at Long Island Dragway, the one and only drag strip on Long Island, with the Northeastern Pro Shootout Circuit cars. You may not be able to identify them all, but we'll try. This bunch usually runs in the mid to low seven second range and keeps spectators attentive. 
You know, quick door slammers are always a welcome sight around these parts. Whenever you get full-bodied cars running this fast, it gets unpredictable, and it's a cool thing to watch. Frank Sanchez. Sanchez piloting Rick Rojas's Pro Stopper. Chuck Ragusa. Pete Pace's Wild Vega. That is a Wild Vega. Rich Beaumont. This Connecticut resident is usually the quickest of the field. Ernie and Ernie Grand Am. Andreas Carampella. Slipping through the beams. Bob Perry. The awesome transportation holds. Mike Castellano in the awesome transportation Camaro SS getting a little crazy off the Long Island launch pad. Paul Rocco. And there's no Volvo like Paul's Volvo. Nighttime is the right time. Well mended and sound and healthy. The Ragusa team's back in action. John Carbone in the City Island, New York, Monte Carlo. Ernie and Ernie Pontiac. Close out 93 with this unidentified Camaro under darkening Long Island skies. This is the Mod Squad. We now see Animal in some lime green trim. Another super circuit event at Old Bridge Township Raceway Park. Wayne Torkelson shows up and as always gets long distance honors coming from California. West Babylon, New York's big block Chevy guru Scott Shafiroff, the Simpson Pontiac Firebird. Ronnie Soxon crew prepping the Fort Comet. Johnny Rocco's Tin Indian from Leesburg, Virginia. The USA Racing 1933 Willie's Coop. Animal trying to dial his Thunderbird in. And trying to dial it in with that 
animal concentration. Mike Faucher's pit, and they're working on that blown 1967 Nova. Racing Jason's Turbo Mustang Convertible. Mike Garaldi's Nova. The Mike Stewicker driven Bill Mitchell Hardcore Racing Products backed Camaro. On with the action. The Audi and Han team running consistent 660s. Michael Foucher. Some have called him the jungle gym of Pro Mod. Team Indian Willies. Looks like driver Mike Harbaugh's in trouble. Loses a rear tire. A superior driving job. Lands both car and driver virtually unscathed. Good driving job and balancing act, considering he brings it to a halt on only three wheels. Scott Shafroff. <laughs> Running in the six eights on one barrel. Racing Jason's Mustang. The quickest 5 0 on the planet. Rod Sabery. As the fastest street driven vet on the planet runs in the sevens. Mike Garaldi. Animal Jim. Ronnie Sox Mike Castellano in the awesome transportation and western beef Camaro. Torkelson. Jim Otty surveying the pavement. Fred Hahn behind the wheel. And Fred Hahn goes on to set the track record at 6.58. Mike Stewicki. A 
a day with the super circuit and some local talent as well. Continuing 1994 with more local talent, the November Northeastern Pro Shootout date at Raceway Park. Lots of cars actually from the circuit, along with some that don't necessarily belong to the club, but still participate in the day's activities. Just like when the United States Super Circuit comes to town, you often get cars that don't necessarily belong to the circuit, but still run as part of the day. A good turnout in the stage lanes. Most of these cars capable of turning the quarter mile in seven seconds and considered pro modified or top sportsmen. Quick trick door slammers. You know, the Northeastern Pro Shootout cars are a good show to book into a racetrack. A lot of the fans really get into them. They sure do. Some folks gathering around and oogling over Mike Castellano's brand new Camaro. The world's fastest pro streeter, Rod Sabery's No Nitrous, No Blower, seven second 1957 Corvette. Pete Pace's Vega. The Pearson Racing Monte Carlo, driven by John Carbone. Landy's Racing, the good bad guys. Back on the drag strip, it's Ronnie Rose. Rose now going blown with the 1966 Nova. making some noise and rattling the grandstand. Greg Kalachi in the Thunderbird. I imagine this is an ex Glidden car. Shafroff with this clean Trans Am. This well-respected engine builder returns back into the driver's seat after a long absence. Chevy Lumina. It's Matt Deached and the Firebird. Mike Castellano. Rich Beaumont. The 
Pierce in Monte Carlo. Ragusa. The Cunningham Competition Camaro. Calucci. Gornaccia. Rough launch for the Chrysler LeBaron. Mike Ragusa, who you also see driving that racing Jason Mustang. And ouch, some body damage there. The hood pops up, a wild ride for him. John Noble. Now, uh, with a Jerry Haas prepared old Cutlass Supreme, I believe at this point in time, this Melville New Yorker was the quickest of all the outlaw pro stockers. Rich Buman in the B&B performance car doing the burnout. As we said earlier, he's usually the quickest of the Northeastern Pro Shootout roster. Yumont is a quick one. John Carbone in the Pierce and Monte Carlo, staging and ready to go. Steve Bascolino Motorsports Camaro with some volatile vibration off the line. More Alcolia and gum. Big Mopar. John Bertunic. Savory. On his quickest pass ever, a 7.58. Kenny Delco in the Beretta. Bad Bird Thunderbird. Matt Deitch. Goes wayward, but gets the situation under control, resulting in just cosmetic damage to the body. And that's okay.
I'm Brett Kepner at Old Bridge Raceway Park. You're watching Drag Racing Underground. Thank you, Brett. We now have a piece of video sent to us by Drag Racing Underground viewer Ken Knauss of Hamilton, Ontario. This is from the Nitrous Nationals at London Motorsports Park, and it's Anthony Payone in a pro-modified Trans Am. Watch this one, folks. Payone becomes airborne with one of the wildest launches you'll ever see. Well, it's now 1995, back at Old Bridge Township Raceway Park, with footage from early in the season. We see Carl Moyer with a brand new radical 1938 Chevrolet. The Moyer camp towed all the way from Iowa to test and tune this new ride at E-Town. A beautiful car. Moyer shows up with a real looker, John. We have more of the Northeastern Pro Shootout cars. Bill Bailey's Monte Carlo. Karate John Mazzarana. Adio Placino's new Firebird. More Alcolia and Gum. Rich Beaumont's Quick Lumina. In the sevens, that's what it says on Rod Sabery's Vet Pro Streeter's license plate. And on the surface with Adio Pacino. Producers a black Chevy. Tricky start there. Beaumont. Smokes up the tires with a hard burnout charge. Chevy. Trying to get it dialed in. With an extremely impressive launch. Vinny Budano.
Mario Placino. Mike Ragusa in the Mustang. And Wild wheels up launch for the convertible. Moyer staging. And a big nitrous carburetor hiccup, big fire hiccup, shoots out of the hood scoop. And it looks like the Musco Lighting 38 Chevy is going to have to call it a day. Heading down the RP return road, still have to say it's a startling beauty of a car. Nineteen ninety five continues from Raceway Park, and we're at the last drag race, the United States Super Circuit's final visit. The last time these pro mods were booked in a super circuit. That's right, the last time. Scotty Cannon's on sat Willies. Hotties blower drive service back nineteen thirty seven Chevy. Torkelson. Sonny and Jack Graney. Ronnie Rose's Nova. Maryland's Randy Delano. Northeast race car builder extraordinaire, Bob Lasordo. And we see the busy Scotty Cannon pit area as the crew prepares that monstrous supercharged blown willies for battle. And we see Scotty Cannon taking time to sign some autographs for some lucky fans. Lachino drives by. And yes, it's the last United States Super Circuit event. The last drag race as it was promoted. And we have Animal Jim with his reflections on the end of an era. This is Animal Jim. I'm here at the last ever U.S. Super Circuit race at Englishtown, New Jersey. This is the last U.S. Super Circuit race in history. We started the U.S. Super Circuit seven years ago this weekend. We've had a lot of fun. We've captured the imaginations of the fans, the promoters, and racers and media alike. The uh, reason for dissolving the U.S. Super Circuit is, uh, well, pretty simple. It ran its course. We had seven glorious years. It did its job. And uh, we've seen where it's getting pretty diluted, even though we're still drawing a lot of fans. And we decided to call it off while it was still real popular, instead of milking it out till it was a dying dog. But uh, in the near future, well, we're going to come out with something even greater and wilder, very similar to this. The, uh, we had a lot of, this circuit has created a lot of stars, and a lot of fans got a lot of enjoyment from it. Over the uh, last seven years, we've had four different uh, champions of this circuit, which the first one was uh, Wild Bill Kuhlman in 1989. I was champion in 1990, then Audie was champion in 91, 92, then Charles Carpenter, and then Audie again. So we've had four champions. This year, I doubt a full DEMA champion since we've only had two events. As we did Bud's Creek last week, which we had an outstanding crowd. And right here today, we've got 26 cars for eight spots for the U.S. Super Circuit. And we've got a pretty good crowd here so far building up, and it's only 10.30 in the morning. So I want to thank all the fans and the media and 
the promoters and everybody that was involved in the U.S. Super Circuit and making it a great success. It, uh, the concept was a circuit of superstar match racers as the door, the unlimited door slammers evolved in 1989, even before Pro Modified. It was much like the Coca-Cola cavalcade of stars in the late 60s and early 70s when the funny cars first started. I think, if I'm not sure, I asked Brett Kepner a while back if we outlasted in time the, the uh, Coca-Cola cavalcade of stars, and he believes that we did. But here's maybe some glint of hope for the U.S. Super Circuit. There was a resurgence in 1973 of the Coca-Cola cavalcade of stars again. They ran every Thursday night in 1973 at Dragway 42 in Ohio. So you never know, we may rise again. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the animal. Animal Jim. He and his lovely wife Linda are always a class act team when they pull in with their traveling road show of horsepower. That's for sure, Diana, especially for the uh, Ford fans out there. And we have footage from the historic last drag race, as it was called, including this passive animal running his best ET ever, a 673. Chia near lane, Bam's toy Corvette far lane. Bam also runs his career best ET, a 668. Carbone near lane. John Nobile in the far lane. And pro stock outlaw Nobile runs an incredible 673. Fred Hahn in the near lane, Tillman in the far lane. On with a wild ride, both cars do the smart thing and shut down early. Scotty Ken in near lane, Karate John far lane. Cannon goes on to be the quickest pro mod with a 632. On in the near lane. Craney Brothers far lane. Han stops the clocks first at a 6.55. Watch those grainies. Bam's toy near lane. Delano far lane. Bam gets there first with a 6.76. Adi and Han get lucky and get a single for the semifinals. And the other semifinal sees Cannon in the near lane against Carbone in the far lane. And Cannon sees a win light and also sets the pro modified ET record with a truly unbelievable 631. It's the final. It sure is. Cannon versus Han. And Han beats Ken off the, uh, the Christmas tree really bad. That whole shot's going to give Adi and Han the win. Sort of an upset considering Cannon's been running hundreds quicker than anyone else in the world today. But the last drag race puts Adi and Han in the winner's circle with a winning 638 at 218 miles an hour to Cannon's losing 635 at 223 miles an hour. The Adi camp all with the glory. Han in the red fire suit. There's Han with the red fire suit, and we see Jim Oddie on the left with the black sweater. There's Jim Oddie turning around. And just as Oddie and Han were pulling into the winner's circle, this on-the-edge-of-your-seat pass was taking place. Karate John Mazarena gets out of shape. The car flips over and hits the wall. Some fire as well going on. A real top-end toppler. That's for sure, Diana. Karate John getting all wild down there on a top-end. But the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is that he's uh, fortunate enough to be okay. There he is. So uh, the driver's okay. 
Karate John's all right, but unfortunately, the same cannot be said of the car. It does look uh, pretty brutalized, but at least the uh, chassis and roll cage held up well and uh, kept John safe. That definitely qualifies as a might need some new underwear mishap. That's for sure, Diana Thomas, that's for sure. And closes our footage of the last drag race. We enter our last segment for 1995, and we'll take a look at action from a couple of Old Bridge Township Raceway Park's big Wednesday night extravaganzas. Raceway booking in pro mods to accompany fuel funny car and jet car shows. Big funny car and jet shows. The pro mods are great to watch under the lights, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Big nighttime shows and mat traces are unfortunately a dying art in drag racing, but Raceway Park thankfully has managed to keep these spectacles alive and well. They certainly have. And we're also going to see some cars from Scott Jazak's wild hot rods from Hell Circuit, the lone open wheel alcohol altered. The circuit's been around a couple of years and is really gaining popularity with fans and track promoters alike. When you see these cars on the drag strip, it's reminiscent of days gone by, but with performance levels that are in step with the present. And they're pretty to look at too. We continue here on the DRU with the Mod Squad. Animal Jim with the burnout as the sun goes down at E-Town. And that boy from Illinois, always a showman, putting on those nice smoky burnouts. He's got Mike Castellana in the far lane. Castellana with a brand new, really trick Rick Jones 69 Camaro. Castellana puts away the animal with a 687. Michael Faucher's 67 Nova. Tommy Howes, Camaro. Motors for you. And Howes has problems. Fulcher takes the wind light, does a 675. It's the 40th anniversary of the Ford Thunderbird, and what better way to celebrate than seeing Wayne Torkelson's beautiful 1955 T Bird? 1955, that's when the bird was born. The Rainey Brothers in the near lane. And a celebration indeed. Wayne Torkelson runs his best ever, a 666. Han and Jim Otti's Blower Drive Services 37 Chevy. All the folks in the grandstands can't get enough of that Audi Chevrolet. Audi in the near lane, Carpenter in the far lane. And Carpenter falls behind as Han races to a 641 in the Audi car, 216 mile an hour. Hot rods from hell are here. Neil Parker in the far lane with the excavator. Carol Heinen's son's entry in the near lane. I'm sure the late great Wild Willie Bush would be proud to see this circuit running today, and it's extra cool at night. Parker gets down there first with a 692. Frank Schuster in the far lane with the Fiat Topolino doing the burnout. 
And in the near lane, we have Emil Rolando with altercation. Certainly a clever name for this type of car. And I sure like it. And it looks like Schuster's motor not cooperating on this pass. And Rolando's altercation will go on for the win. Perot mods again. Charlie Carpenter's 55 in the near lane. Tommy Howe's in the far lane. And Howe's wrestles his way down a quarter mile for a victory in a 680. Graney's near lane, Animal far lane. And Animal takes the win with a 691. Fortress Nova in the near lane, Han in the far lane. And a bit of an upset in the making, Fortress race with a 671. Castellana near lane, Torkelson far lane. Castellana's big block Camaro wins with a 679. Hot rods from hell means rubber roasting burnouts. Neil Parker on a solo pass, 667, 208 miles an hour. Emil Rolando's altercation smokes him up in the near lane. Carol Hine in the far lane. And Rolando wins and goes seven flat. And it's rematch time at the OK Corral. Rematch time at the Snap-on Tools Night of Thrills. Cannon says after what happened at the last drag race when Han bet him senseless off the tree that no one gets away with something like that without paying for it. And now he vows it won't happen again. Can you say rivalry? Han pulls into the beams. in trouble. Cannon rips it to the finish line and pulls a 659 out of the hat. This is getting interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, folks, the way this special match race was designed is the driver who runs the lowest ET out of two rounds is the winner. So if Fred Hahn can beat Cannon 659 in this round, then Hahn's the winner. If not, then Cannon's the winner, and Cannon scores some revenge from the last drag race. It's a battle of the elapsed times. E.T. is everything here. You better hope that that 659 sticks. And it looks like it does, John. Han stops the clocks at a 683. 
So Scotty Cannon is the victor here at the Night of Thrills. So I think Scotty Cannon can sleep a little better at night without having too much of that Audi 37 Chevy on the brain. I don't know, John. I think we've got a rivalry that's going to last. Well, that's a factor that makes racing all that much better. And I honestly believe this rivalry is for real and not a figment of just some press agent's imagination.